Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report. We are joined with Tim Alexander, a brilliant analyst of military geopolitical issues. And people ask, why do you have uh, Lord Sterling on? Uh, Tim Alexander I said, because his analysis of hardware, equipment, strategy, geopolitics is w- leagues ahead of pretty well anybody else I know on any other network or any other show. A lot of them will kind of jump around the edges and they'll say, you know, the mountains of Syria make it hard for uh, NATO and the West to attack. But when we look at the actual facts on the ground, when we look at equipment lists, when we look at what's going on, you know specifically and act has have been a consultant uh, on this on these issues for years, Tim, and you're you're a professor, you teach, and the geopolitical historical facts are the two toughest people on earth are Syrians which are part of my ancestors, and Russians. You yeah. screw with Syrians and Russians, you and all your relatives die. And uh, I, there's no nation uh, in the Middle East except Syria that has never been defeated. Syria has never been defeated in 5,000 years. Well, and people you know, don't understand it, that. It, it, they don't it, understand it, that, that, that the Russians, too, you don't go toe-to-toe and play chicken like Mr. Idiot Netanyahu with the Russians when the Russians put the uh, hunt, uh, you know, high-speed... Um, uh, cruise missiles that can take out a carrier group or anything. Our Navy, do we pull most of our Navy is not even existent in the area because idiot Obama knows as good damn as well. That system, the Yakamat system is, the Onyx system is much better. It's about uh, another uh, thousand miles per hour faster and it can take out a large warship without a warhead because the terminal impact is so great. The and you is, fire is a cool. dozen of those at a task force, and the task force is going to go down. Now, who's, who makes the Onyx? Who makes the Onyx? The Russians. Ah, it, I, I, it, I was kind of knowing latest. the answer was going to be Russian. It was going to start with Rush, which is the ancient Ivrit Hebrew <laughs> for the nation of, uh, I am against you, O Gog, Chief Prince and Meshach, Tubal, and Rush. Well, guess what? The Israelis, and by the way, we people need to understand this, and I want to differentiate because I've been on programs like Rents, etc., and people need to understand the sides of this issue. I am very much for the Hebrew peoples of the two houses of Israel. I'm very much against Satanists of all brands, including Muslim Satanists, Baptist Satanists, Catholic Satanists, other Satanists of every kind, including Muslim, atheistic, uh, humanistic, transgenerational, uh, you know, uh, Satanists, you know, whatever. The fact is, we have a situation where the state of Israel is not run by, quote, uh, Hebrews of the ancient uh, lineage, either spiritually or even genetically, of ancient Hebrews were led by people like Netanyahu that are clearly out of their mind and are led by Talmudic Satanists that are not not going to survive if they continue this pathway. Well, it the, says the you know the, the state thing. of Israel is the state of Israel is going to literally. It says during that time the blood will be to the horse's bridles. Now, if you know where a bridle is in a horse, it means it's right up to its mouth. Yeah. That means that. The horse will literally have to have its head above the the blood, because the land of Israel will be so full of blood. Uh, and they said well, even well, the look uh, yeah. the 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 figure six million is very important because it comes from Talmudic writings. And uh, in World War One, some, uh, some uh, Zionists started to, this line of crap that the six million Jews had died in World War One, and it got no traction because it was a very obvious lie. In World War II, they said six million Jews were killed. Now, a lot of Jews died, and they were treated oh, yeah. terribly. And but, I will always but, say that. But, but that's not by the, the way, point. what happened, in, uh, and I'm going to clarify this. Number one, uh, what happened in Israel, and what, I mean, what happened in Germany, was basically uh, Arbeit Mike Frei, which means work, uh, means you live. But there wasn't an intention to exterminate these people. They were being used as work slaves. And well, uh, secondly, was, most of them died of starvation and got secondary and illnesses, typhus. including they got, they and typhus. typhus from, from and, and, and the same, by the way, happened to German citizens, German soldiers, and other people. So when they say the real number is probably two and a half million Jews that died, but there were also lots of but Germans. It, 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 my, here's my point: it wasn't six million. Okay, no. it was it was it was horrible what happened and so forth. But here, but here's the point. As of this year, it was announced that according to Israeli government figures, there are now 6 million Jews living in Israel. And I have to tell you, if they continue the path they're on under Bibi, and as I call him, 666 Netanyahu, under that idiot and his government, if they continue on that path, there will be 6 million dead Jews in Israel and a whole lot of dead Muslims and Christians in, in the surrounding countries. 
Well, and that is what it was. Yeah. That well, is they have four, They have at least four hundred nuclear weapons that are advanced. What I've heard nah, is the number could be as high as eight hundred and twelve. They've got one. Yeah. What I heard is it's somewhere between eight and twelve hundred, uh, highly targetable by ImageSat and their own satellite targeting systems. The Israelis have an intention to take out every Muslim community over fifty thousand within seven thousand miles. They also well, have an intention may, of attacking they may Russia. Do that, but Russia and China will. will, will if there's anything left of them by that time, they'll take them out. Remember, the the Iranians, the Syrians, and Hezbollah are going to hit them with something like sixty to hundred thousand incoming rounds, from right. rockets, unguided all, rockets, all they need, to guided missiles, and they all will they have air explosives. They will have. Uh, yeah. binary chemical weapons and advanced biological weapons, and they will kill them, just as the Israelis will be killing them. It will be right. the greatest slaughter in human history, and we are inches away from jumping off of that precipice. It is insanity. It is not rational. It's not logical. And some of the best my strategic minds in Israel, people like Meyer Dragon, who ran the Mossad for years, who is as tough as SOB as you, anybody has ever seen. He has said it very clearly that, that the Netanyahu and the policies he's pursuing will destroy Israel. It's crazy. When yeah. you have a long list of the former heads of the Mossad and military intelligence, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, men who dedicate their entire lives to Israel, stepping up to the plate and saying, this is insanity, maybe people should start listening. Right, and by the way, here's what's going on. The Syrians are a Russian-trained, hardened, cohesive military force, and now they're with Russian for backing, their people. right, and their land and their homes. Listen, if someone was coming invading America, you're going to see just like America in the first revolution, Americans quickly An upgrading American will their pop up behind every tree and kill you. That's right. I can tell you, you can dump every army from anywhere in the world, and we will chew them up like hamburger. The same way as the people invading Syria, what they're doing now is 95% of these are not Syrians. They are foreign mercenaries paid money or told the threat that if you return to Saudi Arabia, we'll just behead you. And uh, we're going to pay $100,000 for your dead carcass if we ever get it back. Uh, from these, this war theater, and they're sending untrained people over there to die when uh, Syrian snipers, who are some of the best in the world, by the way, hit them with a high-velocity target weapon at two miles, and these the Syrian spotter teams are just taking these guys, oh, bing, 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 and they're just waiting. Now what's happening with the big and force the with Hezbollah? sniper rifles are some of the best in the world, too. Right, so what, what, what's happening here, and this is where I see this, this is coming to a culmination. The latest meeting with Putin... And with John Kerry and basically telling the Israelis, this is enough. Do you know what happened here two weeks ago? They dropped a neutron weapon on a sheep farm in this munitions area, and they vaporized into dust hundreds of Syrian advanced military personnel. Vaporized. And, that, and after that event happened, and the Western media covered it up, uh, with the support of Russia and China, the Syrians made it very clear to Israel that any further attacks would result in an all-out war. Right. And I mean, I mean, when we're talking about all-out war, by the way, Israel cannot withstand either a missile war against it or a conventional. So the only option Israel has is to decide to preemptively nuke every Muslim country around it. And by the way, that still won't save them because Russia has enough weapons and to so turn China, Israel... And so does China. Pakistan. Right. Hundreds of times over, you know, Pakistan alone has probably 400 nuclear weapons, and they can target Israel very quickly. At least. And the, yeah, and, and, this, and the, even the weapon systems that, that uh, Iran has can deliver a, a nuclear weapon to Israel below radar, and they can't stop them. And so these crazy Israelis think that if they use uh, what I call bully tactics, that they're going to get away with it. And our nation is being led by an idiot that's marching us toward World War III. If we don't remove I actually Obama, kind of think maybe he doesn't want to go to World War III, but he's being blackmailed with all these scandals. Well, I have a feeling that man is so evil that his well, skin can't evil, contain him. But yeah. he doesn't want to die. But he's evil. He's suicidally narcissistic. Tim, you have an uh, interesting award on your website, Europe Business with one S.blogspot.com. It's called the BS um, uh, flag. And uh, I, instead of using the, uh, the typical vernacular, we're going to call this horse hockey. Uh, the, situation in, 
The situation in Britain with this guy, this black uh, Muslim, apparently with red hands. But again, I worked in emergency and trauma. Okay, if you get somebody decapitated, they're squirting blood everywhere. Yeah, uh, I remember literally situations with gunshot wounds and decapitations where you got to take off your OR greens and drop them in a, in a, a puddle on the floor because they're coagulating. You get pounds of blood on you, head to toe. You can you have to swoosh the blood away from your eyes to even see. So this idea that this guy's going to walk around with red hands and well, he doesn't have blood uh, on his clothes uh, okay, or whatever? There, I, I have linked two, vid- uh, two videos on my blog, Europe Today. Right. And you do a Google search, Large Sterling Europe, it'll, you'll get you there. But okay. Right. Uh, the first shows this guy carrying a large butcher knife and a hatchet. And right. the base of his hands are red and the hatchet and the blood, uh, the hatchet and the butcher knife are red. But uh, a few seconds into it, they switch the camera, and then they come back to him, and there's no blood. There's no red. Now, even the one that he did have red on, the, on his, hand, his palms, there was no blood on him, on his head, right. no, no, on his, his clothes jacket, are pristine. on anything. And, no, there's no, there's the, no spattering the, of blood everywhere. I mean, right. it's ridiculous. And, and, and you know, and I know, uh, that it just doesn't work that way. And the body laying on the pavement, which you can see, there's no blood. There's no pool of yeah. blood. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. it doesn't work that way in reality. There's a couple gallons of blood in a human being, and when you chop their head off, there is blood everywhere, and anybody yeah. that is nearby is covered in blood. Certainly right. the person with the, with, with the butcher knife it, is covered. It's going to squirt at 20 feet. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, you know, in other what happens is we have the British government and the American flag. government lying to us about another false flag so they can do more crap. And the and real Mark, crap that I see coming... Uh, who who is, is one of the best videographers in the world. He's interviewed me several times. Uh, he's in London, and he makes that this point as well. He's one of the two videos I have. There was no blood. And it is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, another thing that has just happened. We've, we've lost two FBI agents, and these were the two that were involved in, and I can't pronounce them, the, the, the guy that they arrested in Boston, uh, and his brother was killed, uh, D-Z-H-O-K-B-A-R. I don't know. Anyway, the Russian guy. Uh, right. Okay, two of the agents who were arrested that fell out of a helicopter and were killed. Now I I I have a, a five BS flag award. I didn't give it out of out of I, I didn't want people to misinterpret it because these Asians died. I believe these Asians were killed just as the uh, SEAL team that supposedly went in and killed Obama. Uh, most of them uh, a, sh- a few days later, a couple weeks later, were killed in a helicopter crash. Uh, I dead men tell no tales. And uh, also a couple of days ago, supposedly the FBI was arresting some guy, and he just confessed that him and one of these uh, Russian characters, uh, terrorists, uh, had uh, killed uh, several people some years ago. And then uh, the FBI had to get in a shootout with him and kill him. It, none of this makes sense. It doesn't make sense, does it? No, but, you know, uh, what they're doing... Uh, And and there was an article I linked uh, about a day ago that that kind of explained it this way. Uh, It it is so nonsensical. It is so outrageous, uh, the false flags that are now going down. If you have a brain and the cojones to look at reality, you know who's doing it and why. It's always the government. It's it's, it's, it's the globalist and the Zionist, and they're doing it, but... A lot of people are too stupid. They don't want to go there, so they have they, they bury their head in the sand and they buy whatever the the, the propaganda arm that the, the mainstream media. Plus, tells. they attack the messengers and raise the questions. No, and they want the other people to know who's doing it, and they want the other people to be afraid to say anything. Right. What do you think of Obama's so-called reframing his counterterrorism policy to quote drone less? Isn't that crazy? Come yeah. On, really. Right. Yeah. And let's see. This is the guy that that said we were going to close Gitmo right away, right? That was like, what, five years ago? Yeah. Uh, Amazing. Yeah, well, I mean, look, Obama, you want to tell when Obama's lying? Watch his lips. If they're moving, he's lying. I mean, we, yeah, main- we, we live in a, a, a country and a world right now where almost everything's a scam and a lie. 
And it's all uh, originating with the same group of people that are, are jackbooting us right into World War III, which is going to get most of us killed unless we all get off our collective butts and put a stop to it. And they are few. We are many. Exactly. Uh, for example, what's happening right now is we don't have real issues like Fukushima being dealt with. We don't have real issues like nearer space objects being dealt with. We don't have anything dealing with the fact that the ISON comet could trigger off a CME. We don't have hardened satellites, ground-based communications, or power grids. We lost our grids. Uh, East Coast weather satellite, by the way. Really? Yes, we did, just uh, within the last 24 hours. And, of well, course, you I, never, I they're know. never going to tell you this because they have enough redundancy up there. They're going to hide the fact that over the last decade, we've been losing satellites regularly with coronal mass ejections, and they won't tell you that. They won't tell you that, that the fact is that we're literally sitting on the edge of a Carrington event that could crash our civilization, and these maniacs want to start a war in the Middle East. Our I, Navy, I, I even mean, Obama... I, the, the, the 21st century weapon of mass destruction-based global war is not a war of human survival. It's a human extinction event. And it literally is right out of the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. And and many things have already been that, that the book of Revelation prophesied have already come true, including the BP uh, oil disaster where St. John wrote of something that looks like a mountain on fire and then falls into the sea and a third of the sea. And it doesn't mean the sea all over the world, but a third of the sea in the area is blood red. Well, it was or it was reddish brown. It was the oil, uh, etc. But he was describing a vision he was having almost two thousand years ago. This is now unfolding. It's the same thing that that nine one one. Uh, the edge shortly after everything collapsed and standing on the smoking rubble was a guy blowing a trumpet. And every videographer and every photographer at the scene tried to capture the picture. And either the camera stopped working or they, they thought they had a picture and they went back to develop it or, or, or uh, digitally unload it, and there was nothing there. It was who? Gabriel blowing his trumpet at the beginning of the end time. We're in it. And these idiots, we, we, we say they're idiots, but you see, what they're doing is so irrational. It, 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 it's it's, it's purely evil. But we, we, they we, are we driven hold... by a demonic agenda, and their right. agenda is not human. It's not right. of this world. Right, and it's also not the, not just stupidity. See, we, we, we like to ascribe stupidity, but in fact, it's a form of malevolent, uh, narcissistic, globalist, omnicidic evil that's right out of the pit of, hate, of hell. And Literally. people don't understand that. They, they want to attack the messenger say, that's a conspiracy theory. I say, look, just look at what is happening. When you have Putin saying to Netanyahu, if you do this attack on Syria, we're taking you out. You don't play chicken with the Russians. And our president, now, uh, one disaster after another every week, needs to be removed from office. We need rational control of our government again. We need to get a rational policy on every single thing, including health care. And he's marching us to... our nuclear expert, that's his radio name, and of course the issue is uh, the open nuclear sore, literally releasing radiation at an unbelievable precedent level, and a new earthquake now registered over six. Since the one happened two months ago, the levels of radiation now are regularly fluctuating between three and four times background regularly. The new normal is not two times background since the over two years ago Fukushima Daiichi meltdown and literally a waste depot site that's being, nothing's being done internationally. There's no data being gathered. We have a data desert. Uh, tell us, uh, Chris, what's, what's going on, because this disaster, as I mentioned with Dr. Apsley yesterday, is causing a mitochondrial apocalypse. As you destroy mitochondria, you also not only cause vascular disease, the rate of cerebral apoplexy, which is stroke, has gone up 3,500% in northern Japan. The rate of uh, fetal hypothyroidism, uh, stillbirth, and birth defects as well as children dying in the neonatal intensive care unit in the northern hemisphere has gone up considerably. 
Uh, the rate of hypertension and cancer rates eventually, if you live long enough, because it's going to cause vascular disease first, we're going to start seeing the decrease of the herd immunity of the population. At the same time, we now have the emergence of the MERS, novel coronavirus, a Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome super plague, which has now hit New York City at St. Francis Hospital. We have the H7N9 that's jamming up hospitals in China near uh, Shanghai, China. We have literally a situation in the Middle East where World War III is about to break out literally any moment. Uh, from crazy policies by our government and by the globalists and, and NATO and the insane nation of Israel that are being led by a bunch of Satanists. Um, this is all very biblical. And the problem is that people think we're, quote, conspiracy theorists when we're literally taking hard facts as much as it's difficult to get data. Because even when we look at our radiation detectors, the radiation detection system that the government set up, they literally shut down to a great extent after Fukushima and didn't re-erect it we can't get proper air, water, or food sampling. Uh, even the sampling done at the University of California, Berkeley, when I contacted the senior engineers there at the nuclear engineering department last year, they literally shut things down right after I contacted them. And the director came back from Germany. They don't want this data out. The government basically probably threatened them, like, oh, my gosh, you're not talking to Deagle. He's going to ask for hard data. Uh, I, you know, I talked to Senator Wyden uh, in Oregon and Senator Feinstein's office here in California. <coughs> they're worse than useless. And their so-called nuclear expert needs to go back to kindergarten, let alone to go to a school to learn about radiotoxicology. I asked what I call the Dr. Deagle screening set of questions, and again, I've been a professor teaching uh, students and uh, people that are residents and these people are basically blithering idiots and, of course, combined with evil because they won't face the facts that without data we can't make rational decisions. And I see the situation in Fukushima now with this new quake. We're going to see a massive burst of radiation. The Japanese, we have the reports up now that the 26,000 tons of three giant underground depots that were leaking into the ocean through underground channels, they're not just pumping this into new containers. They're pumping it raw, high concentrated radioactive waste directly into the Pacific Ocean. This is so With crazy. And so, in it, by the way. Yeah, this is so crazy. This is so damned evil. And they get indignant over it. And you know what they do on the weekend? They go home. There's nobody watching the store. This is craziness. They put a chain lock up in the gate. <laughs> this is the kind of craziness. And when people say, Dr. Deagle, why do you say such negative things? I say, look, you're just like a surgeon. If I know where the bleeding is, I can stop it. I can clamp the aorta. I can put a Dacron graft, and I can do surgery because I've done all these kind of surgeries. But you got to face reality or you die. If someone's got a piece of windshield stuck in their face and their chest and you got to clamp their, uh, you know, their vascular tree for their left lung and you don't get that the rib spreaders out and take the damn thing and clamp it so you can actually save their life and they don't bleed out within minutes, they're dead. And that's what's happening to our civilization. We are literally in cold blue, full cardiac arrest. Oh, my God, they got second-degree burns to their entire body. How the hell are we going to keep their electrolytes up kind of status? So that's what the state of the world is now. We're on the edge of a worldwide global airborne plague, a world war, and a bond market collapse, and a food collapse with us heading toward the ice on comet, most likely is triggering off a major coronal mass ejection and a series of storms that could go on for several years on the sun. We've had CMEs in the last few weeks that have been unprecedented. In fact, the biggest X-class uh, storm struck our planet just a few days ago. It may well have been the reason it knocked out that uh, that satellite you talked about, Tim. Right. Uh, the, we uh, raised questions. And, yeah, and, and again, I have contacts inside the Pentagon, inside Homeland Security, and they asked three questions. They said, who the hell's on Deagle's show? What questions are they asking? And how the hell do they know it? And the biggest problem I find dealing with the government, because I work with them, is they don't talk to each other. We're talking about departments within our own government. DARPA doesn't talk to CIA. CIA doesn't talk to the FBI. <coughs> Nobody talks to the Space Command. <coughs> one branch of the military hides stuff from the other branches. It's all one up and ship. It's all craziness. And then when you get to the level of the president, these people are just like preening peacocks. Obama should have a set of feathers he wears when he's in public. And he should learn how to make bird sounds, you know, like a peacock. 
it's really, it's really quite disgusting. It's like, oh my God! I mean, we have a preening peacock telling us everything's fine. You just worship him. Don't worry about the flash. When you hold your hands up, you can see your bones because it's the last thing you'll see on earth before you, you turn see, into a vapor when, when cloud. When you see someone act as he does, you know that they are one very narcissistic and two high, highly insecure. Exactly, but the problem is, is he's a perfect puppet, perfect puppet for doing gross evil. And for the globalists behind him, they're like the screw tape letters of C.S. Lewis saying, yes, we will finally kill all the Jews. We'll kill America and destroy the idea of republics. <laughs> Satan is doing that. And people think, you're making this up, Daigle. Well, we got nuclear experts. We got scientists like Dr. Apsley. We have people coming on. For God's sake, stop this stupid damned attacking Deagle or any of our guests thinking this is a, quote, conspiracy theory. By the when, way, when theory. you see what is happening at Fukushima alone, you know, it really doesn't make sense. It's been over two years, and essentially they've done, in terms of, of, of something really profound to solve the problems, nothing. Two well, years. Actually, plus. Well, actually, if anything, they've actually kind of screwed around with it. They put a false uh, faux... Uh, structure around it to make it look cosmetically better around reactor number one and they've done nothing they haven't even properly walled up so the cooling pools don't fall over and these are 200 feet high well guys uh, I'm not a nuclear physicist like you two are but I think I'm right on this BS oh. does not stop radiation right now, to, now I, I, Karis, I want you to give us the full scope of just how nuts this is and these recurring earthquakes this one's now is a six we know that they've already said if the experts, if it's hit with a seven, bye bye Fukushima, bye bye, you know, like the Bob McLean song, bye bye American Pie, bye bye, yeah. not just America. We're not talking about the West Coast. We're talking about the Northern Hemisphere. We're a hazmat site now, the Northern Hemisphere of Earth. Our planet is on intensive care unit life support. It's dying, and people are kind of just going off to the theater and getting their McDonald's and just watching Direct TV and thinking. Oh, yeah, you know, Obama's just great. He's got the second term. Don't they understand that we're about to see the end of human civilization unless we repent? And by the way, it all starts with Jesus. You repent, then real solutions, which we can have, because I talk about real solutions every day on this show, and if one person that is a servant of the Most High God and cares about and loves his creator and loves his fellow man and the Republic of America, which can be a light to the whole world, as John F. Kennedy said, a house on a hill... If we can just stand up and be a witness for the Most High God, we can, as he said, God said in Second Chronicles, heal our land. He'll give us technology to destroy radioactive stopes. He'll allow us to sequester it, to, to control and destroy Fukushima, to get rid of old, dangerous nuclear technology along fault lines like the New Madrid fault system. But if we don't repent, we are seeing the front edge of a great darkness that shall envelop the land and destroy all life on this earth, except for maybe cockroaches and a few bacteria. Back in a moment. Welcome back, and uh, Chris, give us the update. Uh, we have a couple updates, not only in Fukushima, but also in San Onofre. Uh, Barney Gunderson has basically said that any opening and reactivation of the reactors at San Onofre, which is already 12 miles where Dr. Deagle is sitting in the studio, is an experimentation of over 20 million Southern Californians. Uh, we have insanity and on steroids now. We have an incompetent, narcissistic, and not just Obama. Every government on Earth basically is looking at their navel. Nobody is doing anything about any real serious issue, but they're marching toward a catastrophe financially, geopolitically, and environmentally on the planet. Well, San Onofre is a good example, but you mentioned about Fukushima in this report. Can you give us some more info? Okay. The first Fukushima report I'd like to talk about is the one that appeared in the <clears throat> Japan Times uh, just uh, recently on the 21st, where a reporter is talking about there's a war going on between TEPCO, which is running out of room for their radioactive water that they're storing on the tank. That's Something we've told you. I, sometimes I feel like sometimes, sometimes I feel like we've been telling them the news, and then they, then they put it, and then they print it, and then it uh, all of a sudden it comes back as new news. But we've talked about this, you know, a long time ago that they would run out of room in the tanks that they have. Well, it's happening right now, or it has been happening. Uh, 
also that the tanks that they are using to store this water are well, we've called it a lot of times makeshift tanks. They're not they're not designed for any kind of durability. Yeah. And right here it's talking about a TEPCO reveal April fifth that radioactive water stored in makeshift cisterns with conings are leaking into the soil. Now this forced uh, the utility to stop using those reservoirs. So what are they going to do? They have to build more of these flimsy makeshift tanks and get them in there. But before that happens. Uh, there are oh, about 940 of these above-ground tanks, and uh, 280 of them are considered temporary and are leaking because they're made up, and I brought this up before, they're made of steel plates bolted together, and they're, they're, uh, they're in need of maintenance. They're, they're, not, they're not meant to be shaken by earthquakes and, and other uh, and typhoons that, that have been subject, uh, that uh, Fukushima has been subject to. So... What's happening? Yes, of course they're going to leak, and uh, there's really no, there's no real long-term, you know, a real, real uh, solution for this. So, uh, just, uh, just on the 18th, there was a 6.0 earthquake that sure seems to be. They sure seem to be getting a lot of them uh, uh, directed uh, at or near Fukushima. Close enough mm-hmm. in this case, where units five and six. We don't really talk about units five and six, right. which did not undergo a meltdown because one one diesel air cooled diesel generator functioned as as required and prevented a meltdown there. But but it was found that there was damage there, and, and it's hard to tell how much damage, but it was enough where there was some leaking water from a purification system. So what needs to happen is TEPCO needs to go do a full uh, inspection again of uh, a post-6.0 uh, earthquake of these units 1 through 4, which is rather difficult because why? Because you can't, you don't have free and easy access through of uh, number one, rubble, loss of power, there's darkness in there, and really high radioactive fields in some places. So uh, to do a full assessment isn't going to be easy. It's going to take up a lot of memory. Every time we talked about that, every time you subject workers to high radiation, well, you're using up some of their allowed dose, and then you have to get new ones. You have to train them up and, and, to, and to teach them uh, the, the lay of the land as far as the plant's concerned. Can you do that fast? No. Can you Do you run out of people? Well, of course you do. So... Um, uh, you know, it's it's hard. It's it's uh, an ongoing situation, and that was a, I was afraid of that a long time ago. It's certainly not going to get any better. And I really appreciated you having Doctor Apsley on. I said, which I actually I caught I caught that interview, and uh, it, was, it was nice to uh, to hear someone else's view on what was going to happen on the. Um, on the tail end of mm. uh, the bioaccumulation yeah. effects and, and, yeah. and that kind of stuff, which I cannot yeah. talk about with any kind of authority. So it, it, hey. was, a, it was a good... Uh, Chris, uh, Chris, let me give you a, a, yeah. a metaphor here so you can get an idea. Visualize Dr. Deagle and all my... Uh, how can I say it? Uh, inability to be silent. Standing on a hill of sackcloth and ashes on my head screaming with a scroll to the top of my lungs at a caravan of politicians below as they travel toward the city of Babylon, which, of course, is not just one city, but the controllers of the banksters and the Satanists that run this world, and screaming to the top of my head that we are literally heading toward a catastrophe that will end civilization on our planet. We're literally at the point now where I really believe that God's judgment is just hanging like the Amicles sword over us, and God is literally basically holding back to the ceiling of, of the people that believe the truth. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that are very ticked off. I mean, I, one of the things that I try to do on my show regularly is the end, my enemy is not uh, people that curse at me. My enemy is apathy. If I can piss you off, good. If I can glorify the Most High God and, and help save you from medical illness or from stupidity or just not asking a good question, good. But the worst thing of all is apathy and inaction. Our civilization is basically right now uh, kind of like frozen like a deer in the headlights, not realizing that things like Fukushima Daiichi, things like not controlling weather that allows disasters like Oklahoma City uh, in more Oklahoma to hit. And I've known from talking to engineers and uh, plasma experts, we could have plasma cannons knock these storms out as they come into big cities and populated areas easily. We could have technology to move those storm cells so that they would not end up with toroidal field generators, uh, move it out so it doesn't hit populated areas or farm areas or industrial areas. 
We don't. We don't Just even the have opposite, a safe room. Bill, they, uh, high, uh, <clears throat> was active 36 yeah. hours and less before the uh, tornado hit. That's, that's right. been proven. Yeah, and by the way, here's how it works. They create what's called a toroidal field, like a pinwheel. The pulls storm cells into a, into a central area, and then they move it by superheating it with uh, space-based and other lasers to actually heat up these paramagnetic molecules in the upper atmosphere to pull the storm cells directly toward a target zone. This is what happened when they had Sandy strike uh, New Jersey, where a storm literally was stationary for a week over the area. It was a grade one storm, but it lasted so long it flooded the area and destroyed things. And in not, in a lot of, much of the area is not going to be rebuilt. People don't realize that, that literally the planet is being turned into a weapon of mass destruction. Uh, and we see this with forced vaccinations, with Obamacare, 19, almost 20,000 agents running health care, IRS agents. We see it with Obama arming the Israeli maniacs that they want to start a war with Muslim nations, which will virtually guarantee not only will Israel cease to exist, so will America will cease to exist, too. Because when you start the kind of war that there is going to happen, if you really aggravate Russia and China, yeah, we'll destroy them, but they'll also destroy us. Uh, I don't think people have any conception of just, you know, how much we need to literally stand up on those hills in sackcloth and ashes and cry out, you know, like a pro prophetic warning to say, this is the end of the road. This is not time to start kind of spitting at those who are willing to tell you the truth about what's going on. It's the time for us to apprehend that we're at a, the best and worst of times or the time where we can regenerate our tissues and start healing, like the treatment I'm going to go recently through in terms of stem cell. It's a time when the mitochondrial apocalypse is happening. If you don't detoxify yourself, you don't protect yourself, you're going to die a lot faster than your father and mother and your brothers and sisters and if they're older. You're going to die a lot faster than your ancestors because the world is a very toxic, deadly place. And we've got toxic ideas. We get the idea that the state is your mother and father. How crazy is that? We have the idea that we have so-called educated children <coughs> that come out of university and they don't even know how to ask good questions because the current system basically says that the purveyor of truth is just the public educational system and the government, the government always knows best. We have religion that basically, in a sense, to a great extent, is either milk and cookies or it basically turns us into passive victims. Rather than being Joshua Christians, which is to have our sword in our hand, like Jesus said, to have our, our mouth ready to, to tell the truth despite the consequences, and to uh, deal, slay the dragon, whether it's dealing with medical dragons, geopolitical dragons, or the radiation dragon that no one is talking about. I can't get any action whatsoever from the senators. Can you out there, people, contact your senators and say, what the hell are you doing? What are these people doing in the political systems when they literally stymie us and we can't get data? <clears throat> when we look at, a, at the events that are happening now, I'm grieved right down to my bone marrow from everything from the plague of abortion to the plague of inactivity over Fukushima to the medical system that's being crashed around our ears. Every single area of human endeavor is degraded to the point where we are ready for collapse. And that's the, believe it or not, reading the news and the truth is the first step toward a solution but it requires repentance, it requires action, it requires bravery, but that bravery comes from the Most High God only. Jesus is the solution. Absolutely. Uh, Chris, your comment. Uh, just, as you always say, get right with God and repent because uh, this is way too big for any, but any one of us to handle alone and we need right. to help. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, panic attacks won't solve the problem. Jesus will. Repentance will. Cry out.